Okay. I have pretty good news. I have pretty good news. Okay. I'm arts and entertainment, and I think that we are addicted to technology, addicted to entertainment. So I don't think that the core fundamentals of the industry are going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, it really depends on COVID and whether or not we have more shutdowns because the largest segment of my industry requires in-person attendance at sporting events. Um, so it also depends on meeting consumer expectations but not exceeding them. During COVID, we in some ways exceeded expectations and built platforms and pivoted in ways that may not be needed after the COVID situation expires. Like we're not gonna need 10 Zoom platforms. So some of the things that were excess because of COVID, you may start to see go away. Okay, so for construction, my this is perhaps where your next client is coming from, is this. You've got high demand, no labor, and expensive material. To me, I think that that means a really ripe environment for mistakes being made and corners being cut and promises being made that can't be fulfilled. So even though the industry's doing great, I really think there will be pocket filings within the construction industry. I got two calls last week with a guy saying, you know, I've told this homeowner I can do X, Y, and Z, and I absolutely can't. Can you help me? So I think you'll see, a, you'll see more filings than you expect in the construction industry. So with regard to the education industry, what you're not going to see are bankruptcy filings. And the reason for that is they lose their federal funding, right? So I don't think we're going to see an increase in bankruptcy activity. What I do think we're going to see, though, is in the higher education sector, we're going to see a constriction. We're going to see um, uh, campuses being shut down. We're going to see uh, some schools that have multiple campuses are going to shrink. Um, they're going to get rid of programs that haven't been profitable in the past. And that, for all of us, signals that this will be distress, but it will be out-of-court distress. We're going to see um, Article 9 sales, assignments for benefits of creditors. We're going to see receiverships. And I think we're also going to see a lot of M&A activity. Um, these, especially the private, expensive liberal arts colleges, of which there are many, I think they're, rather than um, fold and close their doors, I think they're going to merge, they're going to allow themselves to be acquired. Um, and I think that signals uh, work for all of us because I think they're gonna need uh, distressed professionals involved in those transactions. So finance and insurance. Now, this is a sector where we have the traditional good news story, which may be the bad news story for this crowd. I don't think that there's any reason for us to expect bank failures or insurance companies to stop insuring. Uh, and that's good news for all of us. I do think that we have the potential to see some increased workout activity. There is slack in the business sector, as we've all talked about and as we've heard from everybody else. But the, the, the banking and the insurance industry itself appears to be stable and growing. We have increased pressure with regulation and data privacy, which has the potential to lead to some consolidation. But all systems seem go for banks and insurance companies for the time being. So for healthcare, um, we expect that healthcare spending is going to continue to increase as a result of the aging and growing population in the years ahead. However, there is going to continue to be some cost pressures associated with the labor shortage, as well as regulatory changes that are going to create some disruption in certain sectors of the healthcare industry that should continue to provide some opportunities for healthcare restructuring. Manufacturing, I think that it's, it's going to be generally a good five years, but similar to, to Rebecca's comments, There'll be pockets of failure because people are going to make mistakes. There are too many variables with labor, supply chain, potential interest rate increases, unknown trade dynamics, unknown commodity prices with inflations. Folk, folks are going to take bets and they're not all going to work out. And There'll be pockets of out of court or filings, even though the overall economy is going to go up. I don't have any good news. Retail is going to be okay, I think. There's a lot of the economic factors that we talked about that drive the industry. Um, they appear to be trending upward. There's going to be problems and pockets, like folks have said earlier. Uh, I always say fraud and mismanagement uh, are always the gifts that keep on giving our industry, so there'll probably be some of that. Um, but And, and there are probably going to be a, prob a couple problem brands uh, and over-levered companies uh, to race to the bottom. but. I think those are going to be absorbed largely by M&A, and if there are filings, it's going to be, you know, 363 sale transactions. There's only one trend I kind of see in retail, which is in the 363 sale transactions, you're going to see probably more of this where you're, you're splitting into IPCO and OPCO in, in the transactions, and so that's a trend I, I expect to continue to see.